web app, uh, and we have reached out to a very limited audience uh, as we're just getting started into the, I guess, the entire North American market. Uh, to date, the Winter Web App has only been uh, in Ontario for the past two and a half years. Uh, we've done wonderful here, and that's why we're uh, we, we're expanding outside. So we're slowly getting the word out. Um, so hope, you know, hopefully, we can uh, show you what this does today, and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, so to begin with, almost no one looks forward to typing up a winter planning and operations document. Uh, we just do it because it's a necessary evil. Um, but once we do have it in place, uh, there's a quick recognition of its value. Uh, it helps guide us, not us, not just for, for the winter that's coming, but also it sets a very positive precedent and culture for your future winter operations from there on. But really, you know, we think the the just of it all is the fact that it's just a painful task to uh, to actually sit down and type that whole plan. So what we did at the Ontario Good Roads is that uh, we challenged ourselves to say, how can we let municipalities uh, write their winter planning documents easily and quickly without actually having to write one? Um, and this was a tall order. Uh, and this um, this this, uh, this task we set out for for our municipal members. 2013 of July, um, we were able to um, uh, launch the Winter Web App uh, that we're looking at today. We're actually now in the second phase of the Winter Web App. And uh, we're really happy to report that the way that the whole program has been designed is that it takes away from having too many people on uh, on this document doing doing the work. It's just one person, typically the public works director, um, who's, who's sufficient to, uh, to do the whole task. And that person does not need to have any computer experience, and there's no reason for you to go out and hire a consultant after that. Also, um, we've reduced the amount of time that you require to create that document. So something that will typically take you weeks or months, uh, you can do that in three days or less. So that's a really, really heavy reduction in the amount of time that you're, you're looking at. And the best of all is that you're never really sitting in front of a computer and typing up a Word document, right? So you're not. Uh, you're not typing, typing up any technical or an, any legal lingo uh, into the document, uh, so you don't have to worry about that part. We've actually gone out uh, for, to the entire industry in, across Canada and the U.S. Uh, to come out with the best practices for all of winter operations and everything you can think of from end to end. All you're doing is actually uh, we present you with a series of factual questions, and you answer them uh, as well as you create your, your maps. And then you're able to, um, you know, uh, get get access to to a very comprehensive document that you can take to council for approval. In addition to that, um, another value of the Winter Web App, or doing your plan through the Winter Web App, is that you're, um, well, first of all, you're, uh, you, you, there will be an investment of time in the first time that you create the plan because you're downloading everything from your brain to the to the computer as far as the actual factual stuff goes. Uh, but over the course, uh, as you go through year by year, you're simply changing the little things that are changing in your plan for the for every season. So the, the changes are very, very minute compared to, you know, having to recreate or relook at the whole document again and again. You're just changing the stuff that's really, really changing. So this is, we say that this is one of the graphs that actually looks good going down because that shows you the amount of energy you're going to have to invest into this as, as you go forward. Um, the whole process is very simple, easy as one, two, three. The one is that you, um, after you have signed on, you get a secure login. You go in with the login. Uh, we present you with uh, a series of questions um, uh, for, that are based on or that are broken down by, by topic. Um, you answer those, and then you create your route maps. And then uh, a PDF is automatically generated by the system for you. So again, something that that takes typically takes weeks to create manually. Uh, we have reduced it to less than three days, and again, that's the number of hours of let's say seven hours a day, 21 hours in total. Whether you want to break it down into three days actually, or do you want to break it down to over the summer, uh, that's up to you. But that's the amount of time it takes. Um, we celebrated uh, second birthday of the Winter Web App, as I was mentioning just recently, and happy to report that 39% of municipalities in Ontario um, have now uh, signed on to the system. So this is a huge leap, and we're really thrilled with the fact that 
municipalities are not just creating their plan, but they're also also able to, uh, you know, maintain it every single year. So they're all up to date. So if you had to explain what the Winter Vibe does in one line, it'd be that it easily and painlessly painlessly lets you create uh, your winter annual. Uh, document uh, and it's, it's also salt management and also any material management plant. The comprehensive plan, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is comprehensive because it, it covers everything from even let's say two months before the winter and all the way to, of course, doing during the winter and also to do the uh, the decommissioning and then uh, analyzing how you did in your. Uh, in, in your winter this, that season. So you have your level of service policy, you have your salt management, your material and equipment, uh, your winter maintenance. If you have vulnerable areas, you're able to add that in. Uh, your winter preparations, your winter patrol, your facilities and staff, weather monitoring details on how do you, you know, what protocols you have in place, um, and also disposal and decommissioning, and of course operations. And um, one thing that's not in here is a mapping component that you don't have to rely on JS anymore. Uh, you have a very, very simple interface where you can create your own route, route maps, uh, and they get integrated into into the plan automatically. So there's tons of stuff that comes out in this, uh, and you're doing it all in three days, and this is based on uh, hours. It's not, you know, you can pace it in your own time, but um, a lot of value that gets out at the end. Well, I'm going to show you some screenshots before, um, and then just to give you an idea of how the system is set up, and then we'll go into the live demo. So we're going to start building the, the home screen together. Um, uh, first, we started with a very clean slate. Uh, we, we believe that every single pixel or the dot on the screen has to have a meaning, uh, it, you know, simply because it, this is a fascinating technology. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be overwhelming. So we kept everything very very simple. On the top you have your bar. Um, on the left hand side is the Winter Web App icon. Anytime you click on that, you're going to go back to the uh, this home screen, which I'm going to show you soon. Um, at, and the top middle you'll see your own municipality name. Then you have your notification bar and then your logout button. That's all you have at the top. Uh, then the screen will be broken down into two sections. Uh, your your home screen uh, it's broken down into the add-ons and my data tools. What that is is that add-ons, as you saw, are the it's kind of like the the recipe of all your data. Uh, that's your add-on, and at the bottom you have your your uh, data tools that are essentially uh, here. What we've done we've we've pulled out some of the core data. Um, that people use a lot, and the intention is that this data should be reusable by other add-ons. Uh, there's tons more data that goes in, as you will see soon, uh, but these are the critical ones that we think that there's, you know, you can you can use it in multiple multiple ways. And then there's your settings and a seasonal overview here as well. So the winter planning document, how do you go about doing that? Um, simply click on the add-on button, which is a huge button right there. Uh, this is typically where you would start as you as you get into the system. Uh, right away, the first thing you will see is that your current winter document. Uh, you can only work on one document at a time. Um, and uh, it, what it is is that it's, it's basically a three-step process. process. Uh, step one is to edit your document. Um, so you'll be at you know you'll be entering your data. Second step would be once you have edited your document um, and you see you will see 100% completion here. Uh, once that's there, then you can just click on the download button. It'll get you the PDF file. And finally, let's say you're you're down after the winter and everything is done, the document is 100% complete, and you're ready to plan for the next season. All you do is click finalize, and it'll go through the process of of uh, archiving the existing plan and uh, populating your following year's plan. So in that in that you will just go in and edit the changes, and cycle continues on and on. Right now, this doesn't show any plants in the back, but uh, as you will see in my profile, uh, there will be some documents at the bottom. So as you click on the Edit button, you will come through the, the module screen, which is where, at least for the winter document uh, creation part, that's where you're going to live for, uh, uh, for the initial part of the time when you're inputting all the data. What we've done here is that we've taken all the Different different topics that uh, that deal with winter operations, and we've broken them down into understandable chunks. So, for instance, the simplest one is the contact information. That's what we'd start with. Then you go into the road networks and maps. Then you do level of service policies. Uh, then you do the winter activities. Then you get into the material and the facilities. 
um, then vulnerable areas of staff, equipment, weather monitoring, communications, disposal and decommissioning, uh, any trainings that your tra your guys go through or your and, or your uh, contractors go through, um, uh, list of that, and then you have your planned improvements that you want to do over the courses of years. Uh, also, then your records and also any additional documents that you want to include. So you can include let's say your PDFs, uh, some specific level of service policy that only applies to you. You can have that in. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the contact information. Um, as you go in, again a big button, click on that. Oh, before I say that, I um, notice that there's also alphabets at the bottom, at the top left of each of the module. Um, what that does is that we're suggesting that you follow through with this, uh, with this, um, I guess, flow. Uh, but that doesn't stop you from jumping here. You know, maybe jumping to the last one or the middle one if you like. But we suggest that we do you do it this uh, route uh, as an A, B, C, D all the way through P, so that um, you don't come into a position where uh, there's some data that is needed for uh, for future modules, uh, and you haven't finished the earlier one. So, for instance, for staff, uh, we might have uh, you know we might ask a question. Okay, which facility does that staff belong to? But you haven't finished the facility section. So, in that case, you 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 might have a blank there and might be confusing. So, if you follow through regular uh, A through P, uh, we should you should be in good shape. So for contact information, as you click on that, the first thing you see is an important notice. And what that is telling you is that uh, there are a certain set of things that you need to have um, before you can proceed into the section. So it gives you a very good view of what you're getting into right away. Uh, in this case, it's simple. You have contact information. So of course, you're looking for a municipality contact information, land area, tier, and population, uh, your municipal boundary, uh, your logo, your contact information, as in your public voice director's contact information any contractors that you have their contacts um, and your supervisor if there's one then that's that information as well so if you feel that you have all that um, you click on I'm ready and then you go into the questions and if you think that oh I'm missing a lot of these things let, let, let me come back to this later they should say for later and then you go just go back to the um, to the module screen so I'm gonna say that okay we're, we're okay we're gonna go forward I'm ready um, and that's uh, now takes you into the questioning section. So you have, again, a very, very simple layout. You have a question, your, your question at the top that you have to deal with. So please enter the below information about your organization. Um, as you can see, then, you have these text boxes, uh, very, very simple information. You're not really typing paragraphs here. Uh, municipality name, type of organization you are, structural level, estimated population census year. Um, total area, kilometers, uh, in my case, but you can change that to miles or square miles, uh, tiers, and the winter web, uh, sorry, um, the website address if there is one. Note that there is an orange bar next to each one of these, uh, or not each one, but most of them, um, and that just shows you that this is a mandatory field. If you don't fill that in, your module will be incomplete. Also note that at the bottom you have um, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, and what that's showing is that, and one of the dots, the first one is kind of highlighted heavier, um, and that shows you that you're on page one of seven pages. So uh, at each point, we try to give you a hint of where you are, where you're going, so it gets you a very familiar and very easy, easy to understand situations. Um, so once you fill that information out, all you do is click on the green arrow up to the right, and you get to the next question, which is about your mailing address. You fill that in. The next question is, is the physical address different than the mailing address? If no, then that's fine. We'll copy that in. Uh, and if, he, if, it, if it is different, then say yes, and you'll enter another one. So again, so far as you've, as you've seen, text boxes, drop-down list, uh, radio button, no big, task, no big text entries. As you press next, you go through more questions like that, uh, the remainder seven questions. Um, and once you've answered all of them, uh, you get a check mark that says, okay, your information has been saved successfully. Say okay, and then you go back to the, the module screen. Now, that's the reason why I showed you that quickly was because uh, the whole layout of, of each of the module is pretty much the same. Initially, you start off with a list of things that you need to do or you need to have before you uh, enter the module. Then you actually go through the questions and uh, and answer the questions, and then you get a check mark at the end. So a three-step process for every module. 
it's a very familiar situation as you you know once you do it's, once you've done one module you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly now if you haven't entered uh, all the data uh, then you will see this orange orange tab up at the top left of the module saying that it's incomplete um, but of course you're ideally you're looking at uh, having all of them complete so that you can get a hundred percent on uh, a completion on the document and download it once you download it, it's a PDF file. Uh, you'll see right off, uh, uh, right off the uh, off the bat, you see that your your logo will appear here. Of course, you'll have to upload one. Um, your name will appear here, and then you'll have the table of contents and about you know a very lengthy document that you can uh, save for yourself or uh, take it to council for approval. Um, next thing I want to show you is the my data part. So that's the stuff that's at the bottom of the screen of, of your home screen. So once first we looked at the add-on here, uh, all this data here, uh, like I said, these are the six six fields or six uh, categories of data that we think uh, people would be using a lot um, to, and you know, basically that data could be used in a in, in a bunch of different ways. So we've taken out uh, contractors, maps, material, equipment, staff, and vulnerable areas. Uh, and what's basically what these are are short shortcuts to your existing data. So, if you enter anything, I'm assuming that at this point we have gone through the winter document and actually populated everything. In that case, uh, the system would automatically have uh, inserted data for each of the categories, uh, all smartly done in the back end without you having to do anything. Alternatively, anything that you add here, you can also access in the document as well. So it'll just be the matter of connecting the two. Very, very simple stuff. So uh, just to give you a quick show here for, uh, let's say for maps, if you had created a plow route map in the document, it would automatically show down here. And it'll show you where, it, what module, it, what, uh, sorry, what add-on is being shared with. And you can see at the left-hand side, you have different categories. You have plow roads, patrol roads, vulnerable areas, land boundary. So if you wanted to update them, you can add them right here. You don't have to go into the document to do that. So easy access for data. But we didn't really stop there. So what we did uh, was that we um, created a second add-on that's being included as part of the service. And what this is, it's an events tracking add-on. And as the name suggests, what it does, does it, it lets you track track storm events, uh, start and end, operations, durations for that storm, um, equipment that was involved, staff that was involved, material that was used, and a lot more. So basically, uh, rather than being Winter Web App being a service where you go once and create a document and then forget about it for a year, this is a, a, a neat add-on that will let you come back to the to the app and enter your data digitally. And, and that it's, it'll, I'll show you why it will be wonderful for analysis as you as you prepare for when as you go through winter and also look at future, you know, go into the next seasons and see how you've done in the past. So again, all of this is easy as one, two, three. Uh, secure login. You simply do your go into the winter document. Uh, initially, create all your all your data and your maps. Uh, get your PDF. But then that's where the fun starts. So endless possibilities through add-ons. I'm going to jump right into the. Uh, the demo now. So as you go into the 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 website, the page right, uh, uh, the website would be ograapps.com, and I at the USA page at this point. Uh, if you want to change it to Canadian, any of the municipal, any of the provinces, you can select one, um, and that would automatically change your login and everything automatically. Um, in this case, uh, either case, they'll look exactly the same uh, for Ontario. Exactly the same. Uh, just some front pages might change a little bit, but uh, in any case, you click on. Uh, well, to sign up, you'll have to click on sign up. But for login, uh, we're going to get into that. So you'll have your user ID and password. You enter that and go in, and that's the uh, the home screen that we we saw screenshots of. So you have two add-ons at the top, and then you have uh, my data tool at the bottom, and I have printed out a series of things that I want to run through uh, because there's a ton of stuff here but I just want to show you a high level uh, understanding of what the whole thing is about and I can promise you that if you you know once you spend about an hour with it or even let's say half an hour with the thing you'll be you'll feel like a pro it's very very simple to use uh, so initially again like I said a very very simple and clean screen um, top you have add-ons bottom you have uh, my data tools 
um, anytime you want to, any, no matter where you are, uh, whether I'm in settings, whether I'm seasonal overview, anytime that I, that I click on the uh, on the logo at the top left, I always come back to this screen. So you, you'll be at a familiar place just with one click, no matter where you are. So first thing you should do is that when you when you let's say get your uh, subscription out and then uh, you're you're in the system. First thing you should do is, a, is that you should customize your units. Uh, you can do that by clicking on settings, measurement units, and you'll see the the units that are selected for you at this point. For me, this is a U.S. setting at this point. Uh, so if I want to change that to let's say uh, anything else, I could I click on this edit pencil, and you get a pop up where um, first of all, the first thing is the country setting. So we have uh, gone through multiple municip municipalities and identified what is the typical usage or, or measurement ta measurement units that people use, and we have uh, stored them automatically for you by default. So uh, let's say I want to do Canada. In that case, everything will change to kilometers and meters and, uh, and centimeters and what have you. Um, if you want to do the U.S. thing, then that's where it is automatic done or if you wanted to do you could actually go to each one of them and and customize it yourself if you like I'm going to leave that as that for now um, and the second thing you should do is that in your account you should change your 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 logo as well so that when you do your document that's the one that that appears and again simple as that as clicking this pencil uploading the file and then pressing submit and it'll update uh, the logo right there So the second thing we want to do is that now once you have your logo and your units are in place, we want to get into the, the document itself. So uh, document again, um, this is a very you know quick splash screen to say welcome to the winter, uh, winter uh, planning document add-on. Here you will be able to easily generate your municipality's comprehensive winter operations and planning document. You will go through a series of questions regarding your municipality's winter activities. Upon answering all of the questions, you will be able to download the winter plan as a PDF file. So you know all, all of that, but we're just it's just there for, for your references to proceed. And you see that, that screen that I, uh, I showed you earlier, I actually have 100% completion there. Um, and you can see that little document at the bottom, this has been archived from the previous 2015-2016 season. So my current season going now is 16 and 17. Okay, so... Um, one, uh, so I guess we'll, we'll jump right into the ad, edit mode. Um, as you can see, I have all the all the edits done in green, and um, you have uh, one thing I want to show you also that I can show in the presentation was uh, if you hover over the modules, the you'll see on the right hand side the table of contents uh, actually gets highlighted. So it sh shows you uh, the information that you you pump into these. This module will go go into section three and section four, uh, and also section four point six, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this way, you see the whole thing changing dynamically, and same thing here. So if you hover over the the table of contents, you can see where the data is going. It doesn't do anything other than the the visual, but it gives you the you know an idea of where how and where the data is going. So we're going to go into the contact information just quickly again. Again, this is the, the screenshot that I showed you before. The important notice, I'm ready. And here you have the, um, this is, here you have the, the same set of questions and now, now filled out. Um, and here is my square miles. Had I done that in square kilometers, I would have changed that uh, as you saw in the screenshot. I press next. Mailing question, mailing address, pretty simple. Uh, this next up here um, is, the, is the boundary. So uh, this is your first look into the, I guess, the mapping component of, of, the, uh, of the Winter Web App. So very, very simple. It says here you can add uh, new, edit existing, or connect an already created boundary map uh, within which your organization carries out its winter operations. So I'm just going to remove this one that I had here and say new. And I have two choices here, new and my maps. My map is essentially, this is coming from the home screen. So remember I mentioned the, uh, the my data 
part that was uh, living at the bottom of the home screen. Uh, if you had gone in there and let's say that's where you began, so let's say you didn't create your document um, and you actually just created maps first. In this case, you'll be able to create on my maps and then you'll be able to select the maps that you have uh, already in the system. But in our case, we're actually going to have to create a new one. We're going to assume that you're beginning from the very scratch. So there's scratch, so there's nothing in the data at this point. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to give it a name for, let's say, boundary June 25th, 23rd. Press next. And the whole thing, whole window kind of takes over the screen, gives you the, as much landscape as possible. This is running on Google Maps. Um, and one thing you don't know, but I can tell you is that uh, this is showing my home, my, oh, sorry, my office location at this point. Uh, and that is showing because in my settings, my uh, office address is in place. So whatever address you put in your profile, that's the one that will show up in the maps always. So you won't have to scroll through and, um, you know, find your location. You're always uh, where you want to be. Um, of course, uh, since it's running Google Maps, you can do satellite. Okay. Um, and so in this case, what we're trying to do is that create a boundary. So we have some tools at the very top um, and also a summary box at the bottom. And also, uh, once you're done, you're going to have to press submit to save this information. Uh, so at the top, you have uh, very, very simple stuff. Uh, again, if a dot is not, doesn't need it, it's not needed, it's not there. Um, you, here you need um, an area, a way to create an area. You need to be able to color stuff, uh, add label. What this is is basically it gives text. Um, it, the text doesn't appear on the map. It actually gets attached to what you, whatever you draw. Um, I'll show you what that means. And then you have undo, redo, and then delete. And also visualize what this does is, is that all your maps that you've drawn that are relevant, relative to this map right now, um, they will all pop up here. So if I turn them on, I can see them. I can overlay them and that, that uh, just to see how, how things fit in. Maybe I want to check in um, that my boundary fits in with, an, with all the routes, uh, routes that I have and, uh, created. So anyway, I'm going to create a quick, uh, quick boundary here. All you do is click on New Area and just start clicking on the map. And let's say I want to let's say my boundary kind of goes in here, so I can just move my pins around, and that's really all all how simple it is. Uh, you don't need to be a GIS expert to do this stuff. Um, it, it's just click and draw, right? And it's actually drawing for you and filling the the color in itself as well. So if you want to change the color, you can do that. If you want to add a label, area one. What that will do is that it will save that data with this with this shape. Let's say that I had two. Um, you probably had just one area uh, to draw, but I'm just going to show you some uh, how the how the text works. So let's say if I had two areas like that, um, I can say area second area, and that gets saved with this text. So if I click there, this is the first area. So it's just to show you that the text is kind of, it lives with the shape. It doesn't actually show up on the map. It's just there for your information. Uh, once you're satisf satisfied with it, you can see the, the area being calculated already uh, automatically. Uh, once you're satisfied, just say submit. And you get a little checkbox that says, okay, everything is saved. You're ready to go. Um, as simple as that. So you've now created your boundary within minutes. Uh, so something that, you know, you, again, you don't have to go to GIS or IT experts to do this. Um, you're doing this automatically or easily, sorry. Um, so typically you would have one boundary, but if you wanted to create more, you can certainly do that. Um, uh, but in this case, we're going to leave it at one. Okay, and then the next question was, uh, uh, again, at the top, you see, please tell us about the individual responsible for overseeing winter operations at your jurisdiction or your organization. For, exa for example, the public works director or the supervisor, et cetera. It may be yourself. Uh, so in this case, we have Joe Tierney uh, as a public works director, and uh, that's his information. And that's his, the second question related to that is, please select uh, the, the mailing address of this person. So we have done that here uh, because it's the same as 
the mailing address that was for the municipality. You don't have to re-enter that. Uh, the little arrows going up and down these things, uh, they're simply showing you that there's data at the bottom, so don't forget. Just a little caution thing. Uh, then you go next. You get next, you have your, your police agency. Um, if you deal with, we have Halton region here. Um, and here, the, uh, you're also able to add a contact person if, that, if there is one. Um, but we have left it as uh, a, not a mandatory field because you may not have one. You just want to have a regular number. So you, and then you have your, the number for the police. And again, if you wanted to add more, you can certainly add more uh, police data or more, more jurisdictions that, uh, that you deal with or agencies that you deal with. Uh, once you're satisfied with that, next. And then you get the question, does your organization hire contractors for the winter maintenance activities? If you said no, you wouldn't have to deal with that piece. Um, if you say yes, then you go through the second question, which is please, please select or add your contractors uh, and identify their assigned tasks. So you say new, and here you'll be able to create a new um, a new contractor. And I'm just going to show you uh, what what the fields are. I'm not going to fill this in. So you say con the company name, the main person, the phone number, alternate phone, email address, uh, their street address. Um, there and any comments you want to add and once you submit that what will happen is that uh, the contractor will appear here and the system will have this as an empty empty box so in our case um, we we were to add uh, what kind of tasks have we uh, assigned for this contractor so in our case it was to plow the northwest lanes of Cornwall Road so we have added that and if you wanted to add more contractors that way you can certainly do that so once you once you're done through the questions and you can see the on the last page, uh, press submit and you get the check mark. And you go back to the home screen or, or you go back to the uh, to the module screen. Uh, I just want to show you that the uh, the automatic cal calculation of the of the system. So let's say that I had missed out on one of the fields. You'll see the thing pop up and I'll then tell you that that's a module that you need to uh, finish up. So I have just removed the census here. So I'm going to add that back in. And actually, now that I'm at it, I'm going to show you that. Oops. I'm going to remove that. Submit. I'm going to show you that on the, in the documents list, you'll see that the system has automatically removed or changed the 100% the to 90%. And uh, it's not that every single module is worth 10%. Uh, what we've done is we've looked at the weight of the number of questions that are in each module. And uh, it appears that it's about 10% of the questions are in the contact information piece. Um, so that's why even just that little missing that census here is giving me a negative for the, um, uh, for the whole module. And that's causing caused the 10% off on my on my document but now it's 100 percent complete and if you go back to the document view then you see it 100 percent complete again okay um just quickly the next thing i want to show you is the uh, is the maps that's the most uh, sought after and people love the fact the way that the maps have turned out and i've only shown you the boundary right now um, I'm going to show you what the other maps look like. So first of all, you'll see uh, you'll be able to uh, give categories to your roads. Uh, in our case, we will suggest that you do six categories at least. Uh, you have emergency, in this case, arterial, collector, commercial, residential, and gravel. Uh, you can give it a priority number as you like. Uh, you can give it a color, uh, whatever the color you want to choose. So these are the colors that are chosen by default. And you'll see how they will appear in the, in the map. Um, next, you will create a, a, a detailed network of each of these mod, each of these uh, categories, uh, as in how you know what kind of payments uh, does the emergency uh, category have, uh, what kind of uh, area types do these um, uh, do these roadways go in, uh, how many lane miles or how many lane kilometers are yeah. for each of these, and then also any abrasives that you have. Uh, I'm in a webinar right now. Apply. And then you go, once you're satisfied with that, and you can, you can uh, populate it as deeply as you like. 
um, or as detailed as you like, I should say. Uh, you go to the next by click clicking on that green arrow again. Uh, the next question is asked, is asks you is are you responsible for performing winter operations on uh, on your sidewalks? If you say no, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you say yes, then it'll ask you how many miles. In my case, miles, but of course, if you change it to uh, to the Canadian kilometers, it'll be Canadian kilometers. Um, I'll say keep it as no. Go next. Um, other types of road that road that exist in your network. Uh, here's your last opportunity to add more things. Um, so you you may have trails or bike lanes that you want to want to add and um, and how much of it. So that gets into the system too. Um, then you have then the second the next question is does your organization share a winter operations responsibilities with other organizations uh, for your boundary streets? Um, so you might have you know you might be working with other juris, other municipalities uh, or regions or, uh, all around your boundary. Uh, in this case, you want to be able to to document all that. In our case, it was Halton region, and we have Steve Nash, and uh, that's the uh, that's a responsibility that they have for for uh, for uh, for our planning. And again, you can keep adding more as you like, or not have one at all. If you say no, then it doesn't apply to you. So again, as, as I'm going through this, notice the simplicity that you're looking at one question at a time, uh, not being bothered by every, anything else. You're just looking at that, moving on to the next, and slowly, slowly, um, you build that document. So does your organization perform winter patrols? If you do, then yes. Then you have some more questions to answer. If no, we're going to leave it at that. Um, Here's the part where you create your maps. So I already have a number of maps here. I'm going to show you how the route maps work. So I'm going to create a new one. And the first thing it asks me is that uh, select the type of map that you want to draw. Is it a plow route or a patrol route? So I'm going to do a plow route. Let's say PR generator. And um, I have further options to do the do the route for uh, a roadway or a sidewalk. So in this case, I'm going to do a, a roadway route. Press next. And again, as you can see, this is where I was before. Uh, the office location is going to go back similarly for you for your location. Uh, notice that the the tools at the top have changed. So you have uh, new line, travel only, number of lanes, category, um, and also color. Uh, label as before, undo, redo, snap to road, delete, and then visualize it there as well. Um, so as I mentioned before, every button is there for a reason. Uh, and if it wasn't supposed to be there or if it didn't add value, we took it out. So what I'm going to do is just quickly show you how the how the mapping works. I'm going to, just going to draw random, uh, random routes here. Uh, say new line, um, and then I'm just going to simply draw. So I'm going to click there. And let's say I have, um, let's say my route is that I go this way, and then I come down, and then I go, go further east. So I'm going to click first. First point is there. I click second, and the second point automatically draws itself because it knows where Google Maps roads are in the back. So all the all the geometry of the road is actually being followed automatically. You don't have to do that. So taking out that manual piece from uh, from the whole equation. Um, also another important thing to do here is that you got to know how many number of lanes there are for that piece. So let's say that I have four lanes in this uh, from uh, Morrison all the way to Maple Grove. I have four lanes and then they reduce down to two lanes uh, until four drive. So if I do four here, what it's assuming is that I have four lanes all across here, but that's not true. So in this case, what I need to do is undo that. Um, I need to go from there to there to four lanes. And then I need to do a new line so that I can do two lanes from there to there. Oops. There to there. So that way, my calculation that are calculations that are happening here are correct. So just make sure that when you're drawing lines, make sure your number of lanes are actually what they appear uh, on the actual road. And you can turn the satellite on and off as well. And depending on how how uh, current Google's satellite imagery is, um, but typically you'll be doing that by, by memory, the number of lanes and everything. Um, 
so that's one. And then let's let's say that I go down south, but then this is no longer uh, the, the same category of road. So I'm going to do down, let's say, three lanes for this one going south. But the category is going to change for this one. So uh, just quickly to show you, these are the same colors that we saw in the road categories earlier. So you have the, if I hover over them, you see emergency, arterial, collector, commercial, residential, and gravel. Uh, for the sake of changing color, I'm going to say that this is a gravel road, even though it's not, but just to show you. And there you go, it changes the color right away, automatically. Um, then I, I'm going to say that I'm going to go down here and, and plow some plow, plow until this point. And actually, I'm going to have to plow a neighbor here that doesn't even show up on the map. So I'm going to go down here, go up, and I need to plow here. But you can see there's no map here, so there's no lane. Uh, if, I, if I start to draw, you'll see points come up. But really, what the system is trying to do is create a line that's closest to that, but it's attaching to the road. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, what I'm, what, why the system is doing that is because Snap to Road is on. So if I want to draw here, let's say there's a new neighborhood that just started here. All I need to do then is turn Snap to Road off, and then I can draw anywhere I like. And once I'm satisfied and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to go back on the road again, or there's a map road uh, by Google already, just click on that, and then you're back on the road, and you're following the trajectory uh, and the whole geometry. So as simple as that, this a little thing snap to road will, will save you uh, even where Google does not have roads shown. Um, you can certainly change the, the color even after drawing. Uh, you can give it a label if you like, like you saw before. And of course, you can, of course, uh, visualize it by, by turning on other, other maps that may be in the area. Um, and if, if it's close by, uh, you, can, you can see it all overlapped one another. Um, one last thing in the in the routes here is that uh, sometimes you uh, what sorry what is what the uh, the plan is showing right now is where you put the material down. It's not showing how you're traveling. Um, in cases where you want to show where where you're traveling, let's say that I'm putting material down in this section and then I have to travel all the way here and put down material here. Uh, so in this case, what you can do is do a new line, say travel only. Start from there. Go there, and notice that the line uh, format has changed. So now it's a dashed line. And not just that, but it's actually calculating it differently. So it's calculating a travel-only distance for you. Um, and say, OK, I'm ready to put the material down here, or that's where I want to put the material down. Then just turn the travel-only off. Oops, I'm going to turn that on. Uh, travel-only, do a new line, travel-only off. And then you're, you're back to the solid line. So any way that you like. Uh, we've given you all the tools to be able to customize the way that, that you, you would like uh, to see this. When you're ready, say, say finished. OK, and then you get the, the document uh, or the map listed here. And as you've added it here, the system is automatically compiling it in the back end, and it will be added to the, to the appendix of your, of your document. Um, I'm not going to go through any more details. Uh, pretty much, the, but the, I just wanted you to remember that you know, as you as we, we've seen so many slides, it's very very simple setup. In general, you have a question at the top, uh, a button to add more information as your answer, um, and then all you have to do is click on the green button to go forward, or you want to click the orange one to go back. Just keep keep pressing next, and then ultimately you'll see the submit button. Once you do that, you get a check mark for that module. And you can go back to the to the module screen, and you go module by module, answer the questions, and your your document is being generated. Now, if you want to create your document, uh, your PDF document, all you do is from your current uh, Windows document screen, simply click on download. There you go, live. So you have uh, your logo will show up, your municipality name, and then you have your whole whole document that's that's down here that you can scroll through right there. Uh, so this is, you know, once you have printed this, nobody can tell that this has been done by the system. Uh, this looks like a very professionally written, uh, a, a legally written uh, document and, you know, ready for console approval and, of course, definitely for your, for your records. I'm going to go down just to, to, to the 
to the mapping part. There now, if you remember, that's the map that we just created, um, and actually, the system actually allows you to even zoom in and show you even closer maps. So in this case, I had I had done a uh, a close-up view for. So this is a high-level view. Uh, you can see a little bit of dash line there, um, but if I wanted to zoom in, I can actually zoom in and show the maps, and you know, the system will say um, that this is one of one. So the it's all connected to that one big map. Uh, basically gives you more options to, uh, to, to, to showcase your maps the way you like. Um, the other thing I want to show you, oh, okay, so now let's say that you're, you're happy with the document and you've created what you've created and you're, you're ready to move on to the next season. Um, that will take you to the third step. Um, now we made that step a little bit difficult to do by accident because you know once you have finalized the document, it, you cannot edit it again. So when you click on finalize, you you, you uh, are presented with a very blunt statement that if you do this, you're not going to be able to touch uh, this document again. Then that's for your own benefit because you don't want to be able for people to be able to go back and um, uh, play with the with the with the, with the older documents. You want to keep them as records. So in this case, not only do you have to press finalize, you actually have to put in your password as well. So this is something that we make sure that you, you don't do by mistake. So you can't, you know, don't worry about if you click on this, it's not going to go and finalize and lock your document up. You would have to actually want to be able to do, 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 to do that. And when you do, your document will come down here, and the second document will get generated from, uh, from there automatically. Now the other thing, I'm going to go into the maps. Uh, for this is the the my data stuff that we showed before. So these are, um, like I mentioned, these are the quick quick data accesses for you. So in case of maps, say proceed. Um, remember the June uh, plow, route, plow route of June 23rd that we just created. It's automatically here. Uh, it's already linked to the winter document. Um, and actually, if I wanted to, I could just edit it straight from here. So that's the same one. Remember, there was a roadway route, and that's a that's a map we had. So if I update that and redo and regenerate my my PDF, it'll actually update the the plan for me. But that said, if this if this if this uh, map was used in an older document, the older document will not change because you will um, that's just a PDF at that point. It's uh, it it won't impact. It'll just impact the future documents. Um, the the capture thing I was talking about. So this was a map that we created, but let's say that I wanna I wanna show showcase that detail, you know, where the new neighborhood is. So I, all I do is I just zoom in and I click on capture, and it's showing saying that Are you sure you want to capture? It'll take a little bit of a time and run in the background. I say yes, and if I go back. you'll see the next capture is there. And if I go back into the document, it will be in there as well. So very, very simple to use. Uh, and it can take as many captures as you like. As you can see, there's you're doing some very complex stuff here. But the way we have intentionally intentionally created is so that you don't have to uh, be bogged down with any, um, any unnecessary information. Um, and I'm sure you can see yourself being very, very familiar with the system very easily and very quickly. Very, very small, short learning curve, curve for all this. The last thing I want to show you is events tracking. All this is is that it lets you track all your, your events. So in, in my case, I have a number of events here. Um, I'll show you one of them. We added them. So here you have your storm duration. You can give them when did, when did it start, when did it end. Um, what was your operation duration, when to start and end, what equipment was used, and here I'm just pulling out from, uh, from my existing list of equipment. I'm not really creating new stuff. Uh, staff, same thing. I'm just adding uh, the existing staff. Material, I'm adding the existing material. We didn't touch on that here, but as you will go through the material module, you'll see how this is coming in as well. Extremely simple again. Um, next, you'll answer what kind of um, operation was carried out. Um, what type of accumulation was there? So there was freezing rain and snow in this case. Also, uh, other accumulation 
uh, that you may want to show that are not listed in our drop-down list, you can add them there. Um, then you have this particular piece is kind of interesting. So it says if fits node, how much accumulation was there for each of the following dates. So what we have done here is that we have kind of even removed the fact that you have to sh uh, add the number of days. What this does is that this section automatically calculates the duration. So it looks at the start and end of your storm. And what it's doing is that it, as you will create one, whether your storm is three days or ten days, it'll it'll create those boxes, those dates, and ask you to put date, put uh, how many, um, uh, what accumulation was there of snow for that. So all you're doing here is you're just putting in the accumulation. So again, one less thing for you to worry about. You have to, you don't have to add dates. It just asks you automatically. Next, add your comments as you like. I'm not going to save this because the data is already there. Oh, so that's all nice and great. You have all data in place. What, what really shines in this particular add-on is the fact that you can see it visually. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to slowly turn stuff on and off. So you have storms that are in light gray. Uh, so <coughs> at the bottom the top, you see um, the dates throughout the year. And typically, it's showing you your month span from the date you're sitting. So you have uh, March to April. I guess nothing happened there. Um, then you have uh, storms as light gray, like I mentioned. The operations will then show up as dark gray. So here, the storm kind of started earlier. The operations started late and then ended late. Uh, in this case, the other way around. And then also your accumulation. So all your, da all your da uh, dates that where you entered the accumulation there was, you can see how much accumulation there has been over the years over the, for that, uh, uh, those storms. And uh, what this is doing right now on the, as far as the legend is concerned, sorry, the, the height of the ceiling of the, of the depth of uh, accumulation is concerned, um, it will change based on the highest number or the, 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 the more depth that you've put in. So let's say what I've done, I guess, is that for one of the events, I put in 60 inches of snow. Um, just to just to demonstrate. So in, uh, what it does is that it actually makes that your benchmark. So now you can see all the accumulation that's happening compared to the the highest accumulation that has ever been. So you can just scroll through the whole thing and you can see how um, how your winter will end, how the storms will end, and that will help you hopefully in, in ways to uh, to plan for future events. So that's um, a part of the whole solution as well. So not only not only can you create your plan, you can now track your events as well throughout the year. So all in all, I think this is uh, this gives you hopefully a very good in a nutshell of how the whole thing works. Um, very very simple to use, uh, and I can tell you we've spent hours and hours just making sure that. Uh, it is simple to use. This is just didn't happen by, by an accident, right? So uh, you will find that when we say only one person is needed and doesn't need technical expertise, uh, oh, sorry, IT expertise, we actually mean it. Um, and you will be able to, the document at the end that you produce, people will just be asking you, how the heck did you create that? Because it's, um, it'll just blow you away with the, with the kind of detail that, we'll, that you will see in there. Yeah.